So, Mr. Del Duca, you probably just heard Ms. Horvath tell us that she's the one to defeat Doug Ford, that she has a huge head start in terms of receipt count, which is true. Uh, but she lost to him in the last election, and you lost your seat to Mr. Ford yeah. in the last yeah. election to his gut to his party. So how do you persuade people that you are the dragon slayer this time, and not Ms. <laughs> Horvath? Uh, because clearly, as we're seeing today, that is on the minds of a lot of voters. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think, look, I think it's on the minds of a lot of voters because they realize that through the last couple of years in particular, but frankly, even before the pandemic struck, I think there's an awareness that Doug Ford was taking Ontario off track. And I, I have a ton of respect for every woman and man who puts their name forward to run for elected office. And of course, I tried hard, really, really hard during this pandemic to work across party lines. That won't stop. But, you know, I am, I am really thrilled to be leading a party that has such an exceptionally strong and talented roster of candidates. We are building a plan that will be compelling and relatable for the people of this province. And above all else, given my own past experience and given the experience of the women and men who've stepped forward to run with me, I know that we can start the job on day one. And I think in life experience is critically, critically important. We have no time left to waste after this election when it comes to rebuilding and recovering. And I feel, I feel very optimistic that people of Ontario will understand we got the plan, we got the team, and working together, we'll actually deliver progress for them. How do you persuade people, not only that you can defeat Doug Ford, but that you're different than the government that was defeated by Doug Ford just four years ago, and of which you were a part? I mean, that is something that Ms. Horvath is, is obviously stressing. What's your response to that? Well, look, I think from the very day that I became leader of my party, uh, Saturday, March 7th, 2020, I have always acknowledged that during my time uh, in the past liberal government, I think we accomplished a great deal. I don't think we were a perfect government. I also know that the people of Ontario had their chance to render their judgment back in June 2018. And we ended up with Doug Ford, who again, as I said a second ago, has been taking Ontario consistently off track. I don't, I don't live my life in the past, and I don't think most Ontarians want leaders who are always looking in the rearview mirror they want to know about what's next. They want to know who's got that plan to move the province forward, in particular in that post-COVID world that we all want to get to. When they think about a resilient and exceptional healthcare system or education system or an economy that works for all of us, people want to know who is the leader who's got the plan, who's the team that's got the plan and the energy and the experience to actually deliver. And again, I'm convinced, given the work that we're doing, people will see that in the Ontario Liberal Party. Okay, well then let's look forward and, and follow up on the question that I asked Ms. Farbass. So, so last year after she went on record as saying that she could not support a Doug Ford government, I asked you the same question. So <laughs> let's put it out there again for the public. If you yeah. have the balance of power, would you support Doug Ford's Tories for another term in government? Well, let me just say, as I touched upon just a second ago, throughout this pandemic, I have worked so hard uh, to try to build relationships, work across party lines, to emphasize the need for collaboration in a nonpartisan way. You'll know, Martin, that I, I helped to organize a summit uh, back on uh, August in August of last year on the vaccine certificate. We convened with a series of leaders in healthcare, education, the municipal sector, and, and in other sectors to have a conversation. Other parties, the Greens and the NDP were there. We did the same thing just a few we weeks ago in healthcare. Again, the Greens and the NDP were there. I've talked about the need for us to reform how we do our elections in this province, because frankly, I think especially during COVID, the people of Ontario are fed up with politicians who only want a system that suits themselves as opposed to working for the people of Ontario. This is my okay, so way let's, of... Let's park, let's, but let's park yeah. for a second sure. electoral reform and some of the other issues. Um, what would you do if Doug Ford comes out on top but loses his majority? Well, this is my way, and it's a great, it's a great question, and I'm glad you've asked it. This is my way of getting to that, that answer. I think what people want to see in this province is leaders who are confident enough to be able to work across party lines. Having said that, Doug Ford has demonstrated consistently during COVID, even before COVID, but in particular during COVID, he's not the right person for the job. He's not being the right person for the job during our toughest times. He doesn't have what it takes, not the capacity, the curiosity, the interest, or the skill set to get us through to the recovery and rebuild this province the way that we need to. So given that, Though I'm prepared to work with virtually any person in this province to give us real progress, I don't believe that I'll be able to support Doug Ford. So 
I assume you're counting on Ms. Horvath to support a liberal government if you come out ahead. So what if she beats you out fair and square? You've got a long way to catch up to her, seven versus 40 seats. Um, would you support an NDP government with Andrew Horvath as premier? Can I just make one really quick comment about this notion, seven versus 40 sure. or seven versus 40 versus one versus whatever Doug's at right now? I think people need to understand you, you start election campaigns off, frankly, across the board in an equal way before the people of this province have had a chance to speak, to actually let us know, all of us, Martin, you know, and me know, and the rest of us know exactly how they're feeling about the future. I think that's a little bit of a, a kind of a, in, in a way, a disrespectful way to look at how the electorate deals with election campaigns. Having said that, I'm not going to prejudge the outcome. What I'm focused on, keep my head down, working relentlessly hard, building that team, building that plan. Uh, I'll be prepared to work with anyone who shares my passion for delivering real progress. Uh, I've just pointed out a second ago, I just don't think Doug Ford is the person who's got that capacity, given what we've seen. But as I've done throughout this pandemic, I'd be delighted to work with anyone who wants to deliver the outcomes that Ontarians desperately need right now. So that sounds like you you could and would work with Andrea Horvath's NDP, including if she comes out ahead and, and if that's what it takes to dislodge a Doug Ford government. What if Doug Ford resigns? Would you support a Tory government, a progressive conservative government with somebody who replaces Doug Ford if he loses his majority, for example? Yeah, listen, I, I think it's so important for us uh, to have that respect of the electorate, to give them their chance to have their say. I, you know, I think throughout the course of the campaign, we're, we're going to see, I hope, a very healthy clash of ideas about who's got the best plan to take the province forward. I think, um, I think political campaigns, election campaigns, just like COVID, I think they reveal a lot about the people who are seeking office. So I want the people of this province to have their say, cast their ballots. Uh, I've already pointed out that I don't think Doug's the right person for the job. I just can't see him growing into the job beyond what he's already managed to do. And, uh, and so I want the people to have their say and we'll go from there.